We're going to examine the ankle. She's lying down on her back with her knee flexed and ankle in approximately this position. I've selected an L25 transducer because it has a small footprint. It's easy to get around the curves in the ankle. On the uh, Sonocyte M Turbo, I've set for its factory preset for MSK. For orientation, this mark on the transducer corresponds to the turquoise dot on the upper left portion of the screen. And I'll examine the anterior portion of the true ankle joint first. And on the left side of the screen is the tibia. And in this view, you see the tibio tailor joint. There's a hypoechoic or anechoic stripe over the talus, which is cartilage. And there are vessels and tendons superficially. This would be one of the best views for a rheumatologist to find an ankle effusion. Uh, and that can be seen as an anechoic area in that V between the two bones. The lateral aspect of the ankle joint can also be examined. The fibula is the bony structure underneath the marker, and the talus is to the right. You can see an effusion, again, between those bones as well. Transverse images are very good for looking at extensor tendons, and for tendon abnormalities, you might see anechoic fluid around the tendon or synovitis. You can also see in the middle of the screen the dorsalis pedis artery uh, pulsating. It's very important to identify the position of the arteries so that when you do injections, so you'll be able to avoid them. Next, I'm going to examine the medial aspect of the ankle. The medial tendons, three of them run just inside or just posterior to that medial malleolus. It's best to examine these initially in the transverse plane. And you can see two of those tendons very clearly, right superficial to the tibial bone. As a rheumatologist, you can see uh, peritendinous processes with fluid and synovial proliferation. You can also find large tears or tendinopathy. A longitudinal image of those tendons is also very easy to obtain because they're so superficial. We can look at the lateral aspect of the ankle. The perineus tendons are present here and just posterior to the lateral malleolus are the perineus tendons. You can see them on the screen just to the right of the bone. There are two tendons there. For examination of the Achilles tendon, it's best to have the patient in the prone position and have the Achilles tendon lined up. The image that you see on the screen, the bony structure is the calcaneus. The Achilles tendon is inserting into the calcaneus distally. This is a frequent zone of calcification. And then going proximally, you can get a very nice view both medially and laterally of this Achilles tendon. The structures deeper to the tendon include a bursa and some fatty tissue. This is the area where many tendon tears occur. We also should then examine the Achilles tendon transversely, and this can be done all the way distal to the point where this Achilles tendon gets smaller and smaller uh, and inserts on the bone or as we move proximally, you might be able to see areas of tendinosis uh, or tendinitis or rupture here. There are a number of appropriate measurements that are frequently taken for the size, assessing the size of the Achilles tendon. These can be done both in the transverse and longitudinal plane, and usually we go just to the border where the calcaneus ends and freeze the image. And then using the calipers, you can place one on this side and one on this side for getting a, a measurement from 
medial to lateral. You can then get another measurement of thickness from the superficial to the deep. You can also measure an area. Probably the best way to do it is manual. And so then this gives us an area of the tendon and cross section, and that area is 0.85 centimeters squared. You can also take measurements of the Achilles tendon in the longitudinal plane. and measure the thickness at the edge of the calcaneus.